So guys, it's Dave Baffler video on the channel today. We are going to be doing the player ratings between Newcastle United and Sheffield United. A fantastic 3-0 win for Newcastle and in today's video we will go through each player who played in the game and do the ratings from 1 to 10. If you're new to the channel because obviously I haven't done the player ratings in such a long time, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, follow, uh, watch the reaction video at the end of the video. It'll be on the end screen, a link in the description and on the i button at the top. So if you want to go and watch that, it would mean a lot. Anyways, we'll go through each player now and uh, do their ratings. Make sure to leave a like, like, subscribe to the channel and let's start off with Martin Dubravka. Did Martin actually do anything in the game? Sheffield United did not, like honestly they've done nothing and Martin had nothing to do, like literally I, can't, I, I don't even know if Martin Dubravka had to do anything which is fantastic from a defensive point of view. I'm going to give Martin Dubravka an 8 out of 10. Moving up to the right back now, Javier Manquillo and I didn't think Javier, Javier Manquillo had a great game but like a lot of players today they grew into the game and that was Javier in the first half, didn't really stand out, uh, there was a couple of times where he could have booted the ball up but he's kicking him off a full win, just little things like that but Javier Manquillo I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10. Moving up to the centre half we will do Jamal Lascelles, got a yellow card, doesn't really matter, Jamal Lascelles was solid, he was absolutely great today, like just everything about Jamal Lascelles was fantastic, leader, kept the clean sheet, uh, Jamal Lascelles 8 out of 10. Now moving on to Federico Fernandez, and literally the exact same as Jamal Lascelles, he, he he got stuck in when needed. He's done very well. 8 out of 10. Next up we've got Danny Rose. And there's been a lot said about Danny Rose. Uh, people are saying that he's put a lot of weight on and stuff like that. But from the performance today, I think Danny Rose was he was decent. In the first half, uh, he, he wasn't spectacular. Didn't really stand out. But he was involved in the second goal. And it really and he helped Richie to get that shot off. And Richie, I mean, uh, Danny Rose does, deserves a bit of credit for that. Uh, Danny Rose, I'm going to give him a solid 7 out of 10. Moving on to the midfield now, we will start off with Isaac Hayden. And any neutral fans watching this, any person who's watching this, right, who's not a Newcastle fan, right, supports another team in England, Isaac Hayden has to get a call-up to the England squad. I I've said it, right? I've said it for many months, right? He is fantastic, right? For me, that was a 9 out of 10 performance from Isaac Hayden. Sublime, right? That first half... Like, apart from Max Amin, he was our best player, right? Getting stuck in, flying tackles, controlling the player with Shelby. That's the midfield that's going to take us to the next level, in my opinion, Shelby and Hayden. It was Shelby, Diarmi, and now it looks like it'll be uh, Hayden and Shelby. It's a bit disappointing because of the long stuff brothers are coming in, but hopefully uh, the, Matty signs and... We can focus on his career at Newcastle, but you need a big team for these squads. I expect I don't expect Hayden to play every game, but for me, Hayden nine out of ten. Speaking about John Joe Shelby, we'll get onto him now. I think John Joe Shelby had a good game, uh, some really really good uh, range of passing, and I see things on Twitter of Man United fans uh, saying stuff about Pogba. But yeah, against Tottenham, his pass was sublime. Right, Shelby does that week in week out, and he doesn't deserve the, and he doesn't get the credit that credit that he deserves in my opinion Shelby's that type of player where you can just give him the ball and he, he knows what he's doing he knows what he's doing with the with the football and for me John Drew Shelby if I think Hayden was better but I'm still going to give John Drew Shelby an 8 out of 10 next up we will do Matt Ritchie and I did one at the start uh, for my predicted team I got 10 out of 11 right and Lazaro win but Matt Ritchie played and he proved me wrong fair play to Ritchie uh, it's, a, it's a good goal from Richie. He got the assist for St. Maximin's goal, and fair play to the lad. He's proved us wrong. So Matt Richie, I'm gonna, I've got to give him a high rate. Now he got a goal and an assist. He's proved me wrong. Nine out of ten. Next up, we will do Alan St. Maximin. This man is unstoppable. Like the goal was a great finish. Yeah, he, 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 it wasn't just like a Joel Linton goal. Yeah, you could just tap it in. Uh, for me, St. Maximin was unplayable today. Jamie Redknapp said it on Sky Sports. I'm going to give Alan St. Maximin 10 out of 10. Sublime, in my opinion. Taking on players, winning the ball, doing skill moves that no one else could do. St. Maximin, 10 out of 10. Next up, we will do Miguel Amiron. And he got the assist for Joel Linton, causing problems in the first half. It was a positive performance from Amiron. He looks so much better being central 
and he can still drift wide if he needs to. But he was great today. I'm going to give uh, Miguel Amiron a 8 out of 10. And then the talking point of the whole game, Joe Linton. I'm so happy he scored. That goal can only help his confidence. His second goal in the Prem. He's first at St. James Park in the Prem. And that shot in the first half. He's one on one with the keeper and he's hit with his heel. Like just, just strike it. Just, 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 just hit it. Just put everything on it. And unfortunately he didn't. And even at 2-0, it would have been a great result. But Joe Linton getting that goal, oh, it, it was it was good for him. Fantastic for him. I'm going to give Joe Linton... I'm going to give him an 8. He, he did cause problems as well. He got Egan sent off. He got the yellow card. And then he got the second yellow card. So he's caused on problems. Even the t admin on Newcastle uh, said that it was a handful today. And I can't disagree... Just the end product, and obviously he, he literally couldn't have missed that chance where he scored. Uh, Joe Linton, 8 out of 10. And this is the time where I normally go on to the substitutes, but I really can't rate any of them. The game was done and dusted, and they didn't have much time, so all the substitutes I played, I'm not going to give a rating. Uh, let's talk about Steve Bruce. Steve Bruce set up his team great again. Jamie Carragher and uh, Graham Souness on. Sky Sports are praising him so much and he's and they're saying that he deserves to have the chance next season if the takeover goes through. Obviously the takeover is still a massive talk. Uh, obviously the takeover is it's not fake or anything because they've said it to Steve Bruce. Steve Bruce has acknowledged that the takeover is happening. The only thing he can do, right, is to forget about that and focus on the games. And um, we've got a big game against Villa. Villa playing now against Chelsea. Uh the game's kicked off fifteen minutes ago when I'm recording this, so God knows what the score is. But Steve Bruce said he's seen great today and that's the end of the player ratings. Make sure to leave a like lads, subscribe to the channel, fantastic win, great to be back. Tomorrow I'll see you for the preview for the Aston Villa game. Predict the team out on Tuesday for the uh, Aston Villa game, then the Villa game on Wednesday. Make sure to leave a like lads, subscribe to the channel, I'll see you all in the next one. <laughs>